Heshima na sifa zote Ewe Mungu umetukuka So here is my worship All of my worship Receive my worship Receive my worship All of my worship All of my worship Here is my worship Here is my worship Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. It's good to see all of you. Welcome to church. Um, Genesis chapter 1. You may be seated. Uh, today, I'm going to teach on something that I've taught here before. And I know that there's a reason why God wants us to go over it again building with God. Praise the Lord. Somebody say building with God. Now, man, I'm waiting for you to get Genesis 1. Man is created as 
a dependent being. Man was not created to live independent of God and independent of the realm of the spirit. Unassisted by the realm of the spirit, all the efforts of man will continually be fruitless. It is the assistance of the spirit realm that brings man to the place of results and possibilities. Praise God. Genesis 1. Bible says, in the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. I've told you several times that that represents the first creation that was before the fall of Satan. All right? When you read Isaiah 14, it talks about how that Satan fell. And the question is, where do you place the fall of Satan in the chronological uh, arrangement of years? It is after Genesis 1-1 that Satan fell and he was the one that brought about the chaos that we see in verse 2. Are you with me? So verse 2, the Bible says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now there are three things there. The earth was without what? Form. And then there was darkness. Okay, it was void, and then there was darkness upon the face of the earth. And then something happened. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, the Spirit of God always moves to precede the Word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Word of God comes where the Spirit has moved. The Bible says, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. The book of Revelation 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord and I heard him. I heard a voice. You, you, you cannot hear the word. And, and when I'm talking about the, the word, I'm talking about the preceding word of God. It is not possible to receive the Rema word except the spirit first moves. Are you with me? The spirit moves and then the word comes. Ezekiel is writing and he says, The spirit of the Lord carried me. And then he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, Prophesy to the bones. The spirit has always preceded the word of God. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be light, and there was light. The question is, why is it that the first thing God is creating is light? The reason the first thing God is creating is light is because darkness is covering the face of the deep. And I want to let you know that this darkness is not the normal darkness that comes at night. Alright? That does not mean that everywhere was dark. The Bible says that we know that the whole world lies in wickedness, in darkness, because Satan has been released into this world. So, if it was God trying to solve the issue of darkness, what God needed to create was the sun and the moon, not light. Are you following? So it is in verse 14 that the Bible says, And then God let, said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heavens, and he divided day from night. That's the day, night, and day was created in verse 14. So what was created in verse 3 or what God said, when God said let there be light it wasn't the sun. So the question you need to ask yourself because all you know according to science is that light comes from the sun 
and the moon reflects the light from the sun. So this one that God is saying, let there be light and there was light. Where did it come from? And there was no moon. There was no sun. You see, you have to study your Bible as an intelligent person. So that you don't miss out on revelation and insight. When God speaks about light, he speaks about his presence. When God speaks about light, he speaks about his glory. Hallelujah. And so, we will come back to Genesis 1. Let's go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 30. Mark chapter 4. We are talking about building with God. How many of you desire to build anything with God? You know, sometimes we think that building with God is only when somebody is in ministry. You need God to build your marriage. You need God to build your career. You need God for you to live a healthy life. You see, Satan will always try to steal what you have and lie to you that you don't have it. Hallelujah. You know, for the, for the better part of this year, I've been praying and asking God for something extraordinary in my life. I don't, don't, I don't want to do ministry as usual. I want to do ministry that has impact, ministry that has a unique touch of the presence of God. I was telling the people here yesterday about the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa, how he was going for a crusade and finds out that an electric cable had fallen and five people were electrocuted and they were dead bodies lying on the road. The road is blocked because there is water and the electric cable is down. And the man angrily stamps his feet on the ground and two miracles happen instantly. The five dead bodies, all of them, wake up. And the electric cable went back to where it's supposed to be for him to pass to go for a crusade. I don't want to do usual things. I want to hear testimonies of babies that are coming from a place where Satan said a baby can't be found. I want to hear somebody say, Pastor, my womb was removed when I was 17 and I, we have a baby in that stomach. Those are the kind of testimonies I want to hear. But you see, you cannot just wish it. There is a path to it, building with God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4 and verse 30. The Bible says, and he said, this is Jesus speaking, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? What shall we compare? Can I have the amplified version of Mark 4? Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? Verse 31. It is like a grain of a mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And the Bible says, but when it is sown, it is groweth up, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. The Amplified Version. It says, and he said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use to illustrate or and explain it? Now, we understand that Jesus is trying to explain what the kingdom looks like. Praise God. Amen. This kingdom that we are in, he says, what shall we use to explain or to illustrate the kingdom? And he says, It is like a grain of mustard seed. The grain of a mustard seed. How many of you have seen a grain of wimby? How many of you have seen a grain of wimby? You see, a mustard seed is ten times smaller than that. <laughs> it's not possible for you to look at it and count one with your naked eyes. So, why would God be comparing the kingdom with that kind of a tiny thing? 
It's not possible for you to put one single, you can't separate it and say this is one mustard seed. You will need a microscope to do that. And so why would God be comparing something as powerful as the kingdom with that tiny thing? So he says, it's like a what? The seed of a mustard, the grain of a mustard seed. Yes, let's move on. Which when sown upon the ground. When it is sown. It is the smallest of all seeds upon the earth. It is the smallest seed that you will ever come across in your lifetime. Yet after it is sown. Yet when it is sown. It grows up and becomes the greatest. Now you notice that there is an emphasis on the word sow. Alright? Because... I'm going to say some statements that are, are, I need you to take note of. A seed has no great value except when it is sown. You cannot tell the value of a seed by looking at it. On the outside, the seed may look big, like the seed of maize. Which others? Uh, fruit has a big seed for nothing. And then when it grows up, it becomes tiny something that even <laughs> eh? it can be as big as a bean and yet as useless as, as that plant would be. Or it can be as tiny as a mustard seed and then grows up to become the, a giant tree. Did you hear what the Bible said? That even the fowls of the air, that birds will lodge. That's, that's their hotel. That's where. And so what God is saying, that the kingdom cannot be expressed by looking at it. It has to be sown in the hearts of men for it to find expression. For you to be able to know what exactly the kingdom is, it has to find expression through sowing it in the hearts of men. The Bible tells us that the word of God is the seed of the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you go back a little bit in verse 13 or so of Mark 4, if you go back a little bit, um, verse 14 or verse 13. Yeah, verse 14. He says, the sower sold what? The word. Now when he gives the parable of the seed sower and he says one went to sow and he, he just, you know those days they didn't use to, they have no machines to plant so you just stand at one corner of the land and just throw the seeds. Wherever they fall that's where they will germinate. So he says you know some of you have just you're, you're so young. I met my grandfather planting like that. Because when you when you want to plant Wimby, can you count one to put in a <laughs> in a hole? Can you count one seed? So what they do, they take a bunch of it and just scatter it. And he says, some fell where? On the wayside. Others fell on the stony ground. Others fell on the thorny ground. And some fell on the good soil. But then, at the conclusion of this, parable, he tells us the sower didn't just sow any kind of seed. He sold the word. And so the different kind of places where the seed fell represents the different kinds of hearts of men. So look at your neighbor. Ask them, is your heart a stony ground or a good soil for the word of God? So are you afraid of them? Is your heart a, a thorny ground that as the word is coming into the, the heart, once it begins to germinate, there are things that are poking the word and renders it unfruitful. You're, you're so fireful praying in tongues, and, but still burning in lust. And, and those become the thorns that, that poke your seeds not to produce. So if the soil sold the word, then we know that the different kind of soils does not talk about just soil. It talks about the hearts of men that received the word. Imagine you being a wayside heart kind of way kind, 
the wayside kind of heart. Where by the time we finish talking to you like this, by the time you walk out of that door, you don't remember anything the pastor said. You're like the seeds that fell by the wayside. The Bible said, and men came and trampled upon them and, and birds of the air took it. He says, this are they when they receive the word of God. Satan quickly comes and does what? Steals the word. The thing you need to ask yourself, why is Satan interested in stealing the seed of the word if it is not important to your life? Unajua kuna vitu unaweza acha mahali na zisipate mtu wa kuiba, si ndio? <laughs> no, if if you leave a kamlika mwizi somewhere that umefunga na blanda na hakana kizi zingine, utaitwa, "Eh, hey, umeacha simu." <laughs> now, why will Satan be interested to steal the word from your heart? if it doesn't make any difference or if it is not valuable, if it is not important. You see, the problem with the believer is that we do not think that the word of God is as valuable as it really is. If Satan is interested to make sure that do you see the number of kind of soils that the Bible talks about? The one by the wayside, the one that is stony, those who have no root, no foundation in God. The one that has thorns, those ones, they are the cares of the world, they are so afraid of what will become of their destiny, they don't have time for God. They can sign up a contract that makes them work on Sunday and they don't care. If Satan is really interested in stealing the seed of the word of God out of your heart, do you now not see that the word of God really has a value that you have not been able to know? Because if you find out, if you knew that the, that value is there, you will take the word of God seriously. You won't be looking at your watch when pastor is teaching and you're like, man of God, ah, it's been two hours. Are you not even getting tired? You won't come to church and just sit and be looking. You have no notebook, nowhere to write anything. You will take the word of God seriously if you knew the value of it the way Satan knows. He's more intelligent than some of us. That he knows if he allows the word of God to find rest in your heart. As it is coming, it is finding rest and, and settling in your heart. He knows that that word is nothing. It is not, it's not just the word of God that is empty. He knows that it is a seed that is going to produce a tree. Are you following? That when the word of God comes into your heart, it has the capacity to grow. But you see, at the seed level, you can ignore it. Because no, no one knows the value of a seed by looking at it. You have to sow it. It has to begin to germinate so that it can now show its potential. So the full potential of any seed is revealed in death. Okay. Just take your time and digest the things I'm saying slowly. We, we are not rushing. The full potential of any seed is revealed in the death of the seed. Because the Bible says in John 12, I think verse 24, the scripture says, except a seed falls to the ground and does what? Dies, it abides alone. So that means there is a process for the word of God to begin to germinate in your heart. Remember the Bible is telling us that the kingdom is like a seed. When it is released and sown, the emphasis is on sowing. You cannot know the value of a seed except it is planted. Now the problem is many of us don't have the patience to wait for the word of God to germinate. First of all, once when the word of God comes, it will first of all look like it has died in your heart. But the scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, chapter 5 or so, I think 5 or 15, 15, 36, the Bible talks about that when the seed dies, God gives it a new body. 
Do you have the patience to wait for the seed of the kingdom, the word of God, when it is released into your heart? Do you have the patience to wait for the word to die and to begin to germinate and God begins to give it a new life and for that tree to germinate and grow? That's the problem. You want to value the word of God by what it is producing instantly. Now, you cannot grow or build anything with God that way. Are you with me? So let's discuss a few things. Number one, I said, man is created as a limited being. He was created to be dependent on God and to be dependent on the realm of the spirit. Unassisted by the realm of the spirit, the efforts of man will continually be fruitless. That's the first thing I want you to know. And so, when we talk about building with God, you have to settle it in your mind that there is nothing I can do without God and succeed. Let me not use the word God because that is unbalanced. Okay? There is nothing you can do without the assistance of the realm of the spirit and succeed. So, you either subscribe to the realm of the spirit in a demonic way or to the realm of the spirit in a godly way. So there are those who join Illuminati to prosper. It's just, all of it is one thing. The realm of the spirit has to assist a man. Are you, are you understanding it now? Whether it is a witch doctor you visited or you visited a man of God. You know it was possible for her to, to go to you know she comes from this, this side where they are, they, are, they are very good witch doctors. You know it, it was possible for her to go and say Baba they are about to suck me. Can you give me something I, I need to swallow or just tie on my waist or my leg or my tongue or my hair? Just something that will make these people favor me. It was possible for her to do that. And there will be results. Are you following? That's why I told you Jesus is not the only way to prosper. But he's the only way to eternal life. So you choose whether you want to prosper here and miss eternity or prosper here and gain eternity. The Bible is asking a question. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his very own soul? That's to tell you it's possible to prosper without God. This is the gospel that you people don't want to hear. God is not the only way to success. Satan gives success too. If he has the capacity to translate himself into an angel of light, is it money he cannot give you? Go and read the book of Revelation and see the system of Babylon, what it gives to men. Apart from the transaction of wealth, gold, silver, all these things, but then at the tail end of that scripture, you will find out that the, 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 the currency of transacting with the kingdom of Babylon is the source of men. You don't buy from Satan with anything else apart from your soul. The same thing. You don't buy from God with anything else apart from giving him your all. Now, but the same Christian who does not understand this will want to get a little from this side and get a little from this side. You know. So you find deacons that they have a baba that they visit and they are deacons in a church. May I, may I never be that kind of a blind pastor? The day you take your, your leg in a shrine, before you get there, you just receive a text message from me because I will see you before you get there. So I will just send you a text message. If you enter that place, I'm no longer your father. So you decide, well, you will look around and not see me. May I never be that blind? That you have a deacon or a PA, personal assistant, who is visiting a shrine and you're not aware. That's a problem with our Christianity. We want to mix God and the world. So a little here, a little there. It doesn't work that way. Unassisted by the realm of the spirit, man cannot attain success. So you either choose God 
and choose God completely or choose Satan and choose Satan completely. I've told you the implication of it. One is that when you choose Satan, he will give you success at the expense of your eternity. When you choose Jesus, he will give you success and still save you in, in eternity. So our connection with God is not optional. As Christians, we just have to, we just have to let go and let in everything. We have to look and seek for God as our source of livelihood with everything that we've got. If you are going to build anything with God, it is going to be on the premises of your ability to look up to him in surrender and in faith. If you are going to be able to build anything with God, it's going to be on the premises of your ability to look up to God. And remember, the scripture said it is impossible without faith to please God. That if you don't believe, how do you come to him? The Bible says, he that comes to God must first do what? Believe. It is belief that gives you access to God. He says he must first believe that he is. That is, you have to believe in his, ex his existence. That word he is, 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 is a compound word. Is the I am that I am. Whatever you desire him to be, he can be. If you want healing, I am the healer. If you want resurrection, I am the resurrection and life. If you want life, I am life. So that one that he that comes to him must believe first that he is. Whatever you want him to be, he can be. He is the keeper, he can keep you. He is the healer, he can heal you. He is the provider. Whatever you believe he is, he will be. And your reward is going to be in the measure of your faith. So he says, let him first believe that I am and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So there are two things. You don't just fight God, you seek him. Hello? How many of you know that even Satan is, you, you can't just find him? You know when I hear people say that Satan is an isumbua, I wonder, what do you have for Satan to have your time? Satan, where will you Satan? My friend, just go what have you done in life for, for you to uh, read your Bible and tell me how many people Satan visited? How many people saw Satan in, in the entire scripture? Then come back and tell us what you have done to warrant Satan to visit you. It's an excuse of, of, of indiscipline and all people who are looking for what to blame. Satan. No. Little, little demons that are in training. Diosina Kusumbua. Alafu nasema Satan. Look at how many, how many people do you think Satan has appeared to in the Bible? Read your Bible. <laughs> the presence of Satan is not that easy to get. It's okay. So if you are going to build anything with God, it's going to be on the premises of what? Your faith. Your ability to come to him believing that he is whatever it is that you want him to be and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And they don't just seek him haphazardly. They seek him diligently. The problem with Christians again, we want to seek God when it is convenient or when we are under pressure. So because God will not allow you to get into the, 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 the troubles your life will experience for seeking him in convenience, he will constantly send pressure so that you can seek him continually. I'll say it again because you missed it. Christians today want to seek God for two reasons. One, either they are under pressure or when it is convenient. So, unakuja church wakati. You know, unaweza amka asubuhi ufikirie nimechoka. Jana tulikuwa 9 hours of prayer. Alafu ujiambie I watch online. Now that's a, a, a Christian seeking for God in convenience. When it is okay. Have you not seen that when it rains just little drops on Sunday morning? 
little drops, half of the church will not be present. Those are convenient Christians. How I was trained, when it is raining, we are praying inside the rain. That's how I was trained. Lakini this is your generation Z. Mungu was idea too. So we, we have those who seek God for convenience and inconvenience. When, when it is convenient for them. Kwanza wakikuja church wapate kuna mahali ya kukai vizuri, my God. No, this is not my class, you know. God, I got. So wacha niende, niende sit um, you know, mali kuna ambience. Lakini ukienda nyumbani unapitia kwa kibadaski gununua my friend, humble yourself. <laughs> humble yourself. And there are those who seek God because of pressure. Now, if God wants to save you from the troubles that will befall anyone who seeks God with convenience, what he does is that he sends pressure in your life continually so that you seek him consistently. So you wonder why you are ever praying and pressure is never reducing. You solve this problem, you get into another one. You solve that one, you get into another one. You solve that one, you get into another one. Is God telling you, if I leave you without trouble, you will not look for me? Are you okay? If I leave you without trouble. You know some of you know, if you get little money, your prayer life. Back our empesa is some zero. Yo kumbuke kuomba. Una patanga tu shugulia tu na maana. You're you're just busy because you have money. God is looking for people who will have millions in their account and just leave it there and face God. The way you get anxious when you have money, you just look for plans. Because you have money to do it. Now, that's a report from God that you, you are not stable in blessing. So he will keep the supply coming intermittently. That's today you have, tomorrow you don't have. So that that way he is sure of your appearance in the throne. Wisdom dictates that you get to a place where you don't seek God circumstantially. You seek God because that's your lifestyle. Whether you have or you don't have, you're in his presence. Whether you have enough and more than enough, you're in his presence. I've told you, I've seen people who pray and when you look at them, you think these are closer to God than I am. Wait until they get blessed. Just a little blessing. Then you begin to see their commitment to God begin to dwindle. The, this is a person who used to be the first person in church. Used to be the first person to do this. Suddenly now they are a bit busy, you know. We are blessed. We bless the Lord for the things he's doing in our lives. You know, the other day I was just in, in Dubai. Dubai. Ukianza kusikia hizo lugha unajua huyo ni mtu amebarikiwa but they have no foundation they don't seek god for who he is they don't seek god as a lifestyle they seek god circumstantially praise the lord so if you are going to build anything with god it will be on the premises of faith and your ability to seek him continually and to believe that he is whether it is business, whether it is family, whether it is career, whether it is marriage, whatever it is that you seek to build. For a Christian, your faith is that virtue that connects you with divinity. Are you with me? So, the first thing that you have to put in place for you to be able to build anything with God is faith in God. Faith in God. Alright? Please don't assume you know what I'm about to say. Please, if you can write some things down, you will need this. 
15 years from today, you will need it. Or even two months from now, you will need it. So write it down. If you are going to build anything with God, you will need to, you must have faith in God. This is the reason why. God operates. Are you, are you hearing? Okay. You are writing. I don't know what you are writing. But finish writing. God operates from the future backward. Please look up. Let me explain what I'm saying. God builds from the future. He builds how? Backwards. So he begins from the realm of the unseen and comes to the seen realm. So everything God is going to build with you is going to start from a seed level. Don't ever forget that. Everything God is going to build with you is going to start from what? A seed level. That is why you need to have faith in God. Because in the beginning of God building with you, there will be no visibility of what is happening. You are just seated here. You are just receiving the word of God. One year comes and goes. It doesn't look like there is anything serious happening in your life. But please believe that there is a seed of God that is happening in your life. When it is time to manifest in the physical, you will now see the, the results of it. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Everything God will do with you will start from a seed form, a seed level. Even the creation of the world started from a seed level. And God said, let there be. We don't know what was the period of time between when God said and when it was. Are you following? So you've got to have faith in God because God can call you a millionaire today and you have nothing. He called Abraham the father of many nations. At that time, his wife is barren, no child. 25 years down the line, he's still a father of none, but according to God, the seed he has released in him is being a father of many nations. That's why I said you have to have faith in God if you're going to build anything with him. Are you getting it now? So by the time God is calling Abraham and he say, look at the stars of the heaven. If anybody can count them, this is how your children are going to be. Abraham has no child. He says, I have made you a father of many nations. When God makes you, there is a process to it. It begins from the seed level. So you've got to hold on to faith. You have to believe God. What is said, even if it cannot be seen physically, you have to believe it is there. Oh, God said, you know, let me tell you, uh, 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 if you are not married, hello, if you are not married, and every time you pray, or every time you engage God on that issue, the vision you see is of you with your children, taking them to school, Taking them to where are the, where where is the other place people take their children? Huh? Bouncing castles. That's that's the, the vision that you see after praying for a husband. Now let me give you wisdom. The wisdom is you cannot have children without a husband. So stop praying about the husband. God already settled it. If you do not have peace to believe God and wait on God even when what is in the physical does not look like what God promised you can't build with God you cannot build with God hallelujah he will always begin from a seed level the seed is the word of God remember that the seed is the word of God so every time God wants to do anything serious in your life what he does he sends you a word Oh God, change my finances. And then he sends you a word. I have called you to be an apostle to the nations. 
financially. What you need to do is settle down and stop complaining and focus on your life. God is working. But you see, the challenge of many of us is that we are not able to follow through with what we cannot see with our physical eyes. Can I tell you something? I pray about it, but I am not bothered about this church growing. It's not one of the things that can give me a sleepless night. Never. Why? I have seen the other version of this church. Okay, let me explain. I have seen the other version of an auditorium that is full of people. So, for me, this is temporarily. I, I don't have, you know, Paul talks about it. I think 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 17, if I'm not wrong. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. The Bible says, this is Paul speaking, for our light affliction, he calls it light. Affliction can actually be light. It depends with from what lenses are you looking at it. He says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now, those are two very powerful things you need to put in your mind. That affliction can be light and affliction can be temporal. This lack of rent is not your destination. That you don't have school fees today does not mean you will not be in school the rest of your life. Look at this one. How many? 25 years after finishing high school is when she's in college. According to the calendar of God. There, there might have been issues here and there, but eventually she's in school. Right? The problem with you is that you want it your own way. That's the issue. Your own way, not God's way. So he says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, let it sink into your mind that whatever Satan throws to you is not permanent. Please help me preach to your neighbor. Tell them whatever Satan throws to you. Please say it loud. Whatever Satan throws at you is not permanent. Don't give it the attention you are giving it. Some of us have made decisions on who to marry based on a temporary affliction. Okay. Can we talk about it? You have an abusive father and you decide for me to escape this chaos in this family. I just need to marry. The report is that you are stupid. You are not wise. Okay, let me use a better word. You are not wise. You cannot marry to escape an abusive father. What if you land in an abusive husband? What do you do? Marriage is, is, is God. It, it has to be God. You can't, you can't do some things because of a temporary affliction. You make a permanent decision. You can't do that. So it's got to seek into your head that whatever Satan throws at me is not permanent, it's temporary. He says it cannot be compared to the glory that he works in us that shall be revealed. It worketh for us. Now, this is the part that many believers don't think is serious. That the affliction is, a, is, is on assignment. Like I said, when God notices that your ability to seek him is based on circumstance and pressure, affliction many times for you will not be demonic. It will be God trying to school you. And your, the assignment of the affliction is to bring you to a place. It's working for you, not against you. <laughs> read the Bible. Wait, go back. Let's, let's read. For the light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us, not against us. Hello? The affliction is working for me. Say it. The affliction is working for me, not against me. Yeah, so, kama hauna rent na umefungiwa nyumba. There's nothing. See, let me tell you. 
God has no problem providing rent. The question you need to ask yourself, what lesson am I not learning? Because the affliction is there to work for you. To work for you a far much exceeding great glory. Now look at the next verse. Verse 18. While therefore, this is, the, this is how you are able to, to navigate through those seasons of afflictions. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not what? Seen. That is how you navigate your seasons of trouble and affliction. You fix your eyes on the things that are not seen. Not the things that are seen. Because what is seen is that your house is locked. What is unseen is that you're a millionaire. <laughs> what is seen is, is, is that you're suffering now. What is unseen is that God has already established and settled you. You might start a business and for the first one month, your profit is 2,000 or 1,500 or even 250 as profit. Now, we can rent your kulipa. We can have 8 a.m. every day. The issue is, that's what is seen. What is unseen is, you needed to have stayed with God and you needed to have seen the future of that business. If you see the future of the business, then forget about what is seen now. Focus your eyes on what you saw in the future. Are you following? So he says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. What God shows you as the future of your marriage life is what you should focus on. Not that, Lord, you know I am now 39. Forget about it. What did God show you about your tomorrow? If you haven't seen anything about your tomorrow, then you should be worried. Are you with me? <laughs> but if you have seen it, then calm down. Whatever is happening right now, Paul is telling you is what? Temporal. The word temporal means they are subject to change. They can be changed. They, are, they, will have, they have an expiry date. My greatest concern is to tarry with God until I see tomorrow. So when you hear me, somebody say, oh, pastor, God has, uh, doctor has said we, should, we need to do surgery and do it now. And then I say, don't do it. <laughs> the reason why I have the confidence to tell somebody who thinks they are dying not to do it, I have seen their healing. So your ability to navigate this season is dependent on how much of tomorrow have you seen. Are you with me? But you see, many believers think that's the realm of pastors. That's, how, that's what you lie to yourself. What happened to your spiritual eyes? Are you blind spiritually? God has no favorism. He says, everyone does. He said, ask. Okay, not ask. Pray and I will answer you. All right? Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Let me show you how to see into your tomorrow, okay? Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he says, Call unto me, and then I will do what? I will answer you. And then, on top of answering you, I will also show you great and mighty things that you do not know because they don't exist here. So the place of prayer is a place where we can peep into our future and secure that picture so that we are able to navigate the present. Are you with me? The place of prayer is the place where we can peep. You know like somebody who is looking through a hole or a camera. We can, we can peep and see the image of our tomorrow. And once we do that in prayer, it gives us the, the strength to navigate the present times. It doesn't matter how difficult. 
The reason why I, I will preach with confidence like this and, and just I'm enjoying my life because I have seen the future of this ministry. I know where God is taking us. For me, it is settled. All I need to do right now is to, to stay on course. Are you with me? All I need now is to stay on course and just stay with God. We will, we will come out where he showed me. So I'm not worried. I pray about it oh, because sometimes Satan wants to step into what God has showed you and divert it or hinder it or delay it. Okay? That's the place of prayer. So what, what the greatest gift you can give to yourself is to see your future. That's the greatest gift you can. It, it has more energy than Ugali. You know Kavagara. It has more energy than just It will, it, will, it will sponsor strength in your heart when, when the, the moment you are so down, when you remember the picture of where he showed you, you wake up. If you haven't seen it, then that's the biggest problem we should be solving today. You will follow God by faith. But let's, then we will get into that. Okay? We'll get into that. Let look, let's look at a few things. So God will always begin with the seed of the word. And when the word, the seed of the word is what you need to conceive greatness. Everybody who will do exploits with God. They conceived greatness by the seed of his word. Whether that was a prophetic word or it was a rema word that came to them or a vision God showed them. Everyone who does exploit with God, they, they received and conceived that seed of greatness by the word of God. Hallelujah. You must therefore learn to trust God. Trust the invisible. Look at Psalms 33 verse 6. Let me show you a scripture. Psalms 33 verse 6. Psalms 33 and verse 6. It says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord was the heavens made and all the host of them and everything by the breath of the Almighty. So you need to know that when God speaks to you, that word carries the, uh, the, the potency to create the reality he showed you. Are you with me? Hello? Good. So, anyone who walks by sight cannot build with God. Anyone who walks by sight can't build with God. Anyone who wants to see the physical results so that they can believe. That's what it means to walk by sight. Jesus told Nicodemus, blessed, is it Nicodemus now or, or Thomas? I think it's Thomas. He told Thomas, he said, blessed is he that believes without what? Seeing. That's where the blessing is. Anybody who walks by sight cannot build anything with God. For you to believe that God has blessed you with a good marriage, you, you need to see it physically. You don't build with God like that. You need to believe first what he has shown you. The invisible. Believe it. Are you with me? So God showing you your tomorrow or where he is taking you either through a vision, through a dream, through prophecy, through the proceeding one should be the seed that you need to conceive greatness. You're looking for too many things that are not lost. The only thing you need is the word of God. It's the seed that gives birth to everything else. Remember, I'm not limiting that word to just the, the logos. It can be the proceeding word. It can be a prophecy that somebody just in a moment, sees in the realm of the city and I, I see you in Canada. That's, that's what you need. The moment you hear that word, if you believe it, that's all you need to conceive greatness. So when God wants to calm our, our anxiety a little bit, 
Even when you're not praying, he carries you into the vision of your future. When he realizes you're becoming too anxious, you're almost giving up on yourself, he begins to show you your graduation. And you're wondering, God, how are you showing me this? That's God telling you, even when I can see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. That's, that's what God is telling you with that vision. But you see, many of us allow anxiety to block our sensitivity in the spirit. We are so anxious about what is happening around us until we, are, we can't see. We become desperate. And you know, desperation in the realm of the spirit can lead you into two things. When it is positive desperation, it will lead you into encounters with God and depths of discoveries. When it is a negative kind of desperation, it will lead you to familiar spirits. The moment you become desperate for a husband, God will, God, Satan will program a, a, a son of Baliel from hell for you. Because desperation has now set in and you're not sensitive enough to even see. Have you ever seen people who are... They, they know the person doesn't love them, but they are trying to convince themselves. He loves me. Who, who bewitched you? But he didn't mean it. Ivo, 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 tapatana na kicho yako kwa bucket. He didn't mean it. One of the character of love is that love protects. Are you with me? One of the character of what? Love is that love protects. So if a man slaps you and you're dating him, when you marry him, you become a punching bag. Don't convince yourself things that are not there because you're desperate. Don't ever get in where, where you're desperate. Even, if, even for a job. I've seen people sign trash as contracts because they are desperate for a job. You may a job, KBL. No man, now we need Asha. Wine and spirits. Do you go available? So uh, I'm just, my friends. Desperation, I've told you, can give you two kinds of results. When it is a positive desperation, you want to know God, you want to seek Him, you're desperate for God. It will lead you into encounters. But the moment you become desperate on a negative aspect, Satan begins. You, you, became, you become easily vulnerable. The things that men are seeing with, the, with their eyes closed, you can't see with your own eyes open. Red flags here and there, here and there. You're dating somebody. Now, when you namulipia nyumba at sababuana, what what is wrong with you? How do you pay a man's house rent as a woman? At the love. You know. Next month, we are going to have a single seminar on the 6th of, 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 of August. Please, make sure you come. Because many of you, after that day, you will dump somebody. I promise you. And it will be God saving your life from destruction. Hallelujah. How do you pay rent for a man? That's, that's Sunday. I know it's a Sunday. I know. I want to put it on a Sunday so that there will be no excuses. So it's Sunday afternoon. Praise God. How do you pay a man's rent? Unataka kuwa mtu haezi kujilisha. What of the day you marry him and now you lose your job? 
Kijana tu analala kwa nyumba na watch TV. Amezoea kupewa. It is well. So when God shows you where he intends taking you, whether in a vision, a dream, or a prophetic utterance, that's the seed you need to conceive greatness. And the moment you see it, forget about everything else happening around you. It's the, those things are, don't matter. It's light affliction. It is temporary. Don't pay attention to it. I've told you, the moment God showed me where I was going, it didn't bother me what I was doing currently. I've been a Buddha Buddha driver. I've been a teacher. I mean, there is, I don't, there, there is literally nothing I've not tried. But you know what? I kept my eyes on where God showed me. Right now, I'm, I'm renting a house. God has shown me estates. So that's where I'm putting my head. My faith is not on the provision of rent now. My faith is that thing he showed me. Ask your neighbor, what has God showed you? Because that will determine whether you backslide or you stay with God. Unajua kuna vitu zinakuanga options. Quick way out. Right? Quick way out. Wewe ni mstana hauna job alafu unapata kijana ako na job, amejenga, na nasema nataka kukuwa. At that moment, you don't even ask him what is his name. You don't remember. There are things that are not important. I need to run out of this situation as fast as now. The next thing, when are you coming to see my father? Because you don't have time to interrogate this person because you're desperate to get out of a situation. It looks like a quick way out because something is wrong with where you are now. I'm trying to tell you, is Satan sometimes programming your mindset the wrong way? What, we, what the Bible calls strongholds are not actually demons. Many times they are not demons. Many times there is no altar fighting you. Many times no witch in your village is interested in you. You don't have anything. Many times is a programming of the mindset. Did you hear what the Bible said? It says, Our weapons are not kana, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Pause there. And then he puts a semicolon to explain to you what strongholds are. And he says, Read with me. Continue now. Casting down what? Imaginations. Now, wait. So, this thing is calling a stronghold. is an imagination in your head. The moment you begin to see yourself as 55 and you're still not married, is an imagination that Satan is programming in your head. Unajiona wewe ni guka na ujaholewa ama ujaoleka. So, the moment he programs that, the next place you enter into a panic mode. And the moment you enter into a panic mode, desperation sets in. When desperation sets in, you accept anything. Casting down imaginations. Eh? And what? Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of what Jesus has showed me. Anything that brings itself above that, I cast it down. That's a stronghold. Anything that wants to tell me that I'm not going to enter into the kind of blessing God has shown me, I cast it down. And he says, bringing every thought to the obedience So you think you are in a battle. Your battle is to help your mind calm down and believe God. That's how you, that's how you, you, you gain mastery in faith. Cast 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself above the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought to the captivity of where God is going with you. And that's it. The moment you are able to tame your mind to think where God showed you, there is nothing in the present that sustains the capacity to follow you. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So, when God shows you your tomorrow, it's the only seed you need to conceive greatness. God will, God will only build with those that are willing to go beyond the natural sight and walk by faith. God is only going to build with those that are willing to go beyond what can be seen with the eyes of men and walk by faith. Glory to Jesus. All right. So you, you, you don't pay too much attention of, of what is happening in the natural when you already know. It is deceptive. The occurrences in your life right now are deceptive. They can make you think that God is, has left you. Meanwhile, God has not left you. Let me tell you, you know, can I give you a little story? Maybe to encourage some of you. My elder sister, when you were in wine press last year, you remember her, Pastor Jennifer? Where did she come from? From the US, right? That lady is the smartest amongst us in our family. Because Jennifer was an A student from class 1 to form 4. The last exam she did before KCSE, she had a plain A. Guess what? She does a KCSE and gets a D+. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> In her dream, she wanted to be a, a, a doctor, a medical doctor. And she, somebody gives And after wearing the necklace, I hope I'm, I'm right, yes. That's how she ended up with a D plus. Come back here. Come back here. That's, that's, not, that's not the path we, we are to follow. So, listen. After that, guess where she lands? She, be she becomes a house girl. She knew what happened to her, so she didn't want to repeat school. They begged her. Several schools wanted to take her for free. Because she, she was... They knew that, no, something went wrong. The school came, the headmaster came home looking for her. Come back to school, you will pay nothing. Just come and write your exam again. She said no. She becomes a house girl. Guess what? From being a house girl, somebody sees her, goes to Nigeria, gets a scholarship for Bible school, and gives her from house girl into the plane to Nigeria to Bible school. Goes to Nigeria and meets her husband who is the le a lecturer in that college. A few years after their marriage wins American citizenship lottery. Goes to America. Enrolls for psychology classes. Right now She's doing her master's degree. She's working in a hospital. God has many paths to bring you back to where he wanted you to be. You don't have to give up. Imagine now, are you seeing that path? From failing to house girl? From house girl? I mean, if you met her as a house girl cleaning somebody's clothes and, and changing diapers for somebody's children, would you think she will be where she is today? That's what I'm telling you. Keep your eyes on where God showed you you're going. What is happening now is it can be deceptive. If you allow Satan use it to program your imaginations 
and program your thoughts, it will deceive you to fall. Don't make decisions based on what you're going through now. Make decisions based on where God is going with you. Is somebody hearing me? And I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, if you're in that phase of life where it looks like nothing is working, may God show you your tomorrow in the name of Jesus. May God show you what is going to happen with you five, ten years from now. And may that be the source of your seed for greatness. <laughs> the value of a seed, like I said, cannot be seen with our na na naked eyes. The value of a seed is known when the seed has been sown. The full potential of any seed is revealed in its death. So allow the word of God to take time in your heart to die and to begin to grow. What you will become has not been seen. Did you hear what 1 Corinthians 2 9 said? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not done what? They have not heard. This is God's prophetic word for you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Don't lie to yourself, this is where you're going to end. No, not with God. Not with God. I have given you my own story. I finished high school, got a very good grade. If you had a C plus in 2005, that was a good grade. Okay, I look like a young man. I finished high school 205. Yeah, I know some of you are somewhere in somebody's knees. Try to come up either. And I had 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 17 admission letters. Some for university, others for college. I couldn't go to any one of them. What happened? No money. No money. And then, in that confusion near Kumaliza Shule, the school, the, the head teacher was like, you can come. You know when the school sees an asset? Unaiza kuja, urudie, uki, what am I repeating? I know myself, I'm not dull. Not stupid. So, whatever I got was my grade. I wasn't given. Najwa wengiwenu shule muna peangwa. No, you got an E. So, <laughs> what I got was mine. I was not given. <laughs> so, I started doing things. Kanza Boda Boda. Okay, the first thing was I came to Nairobi, Nikafanya Mjengo. I was doing Mjengo in Langata in 2006, 2007. From there, Buddha Buddha from there, Nikanza could. Vitu mingi wewe. I don't need to explain all that to you. 2007, I got into teaching. I became a teacher. Taught 27, 208, 209. 2010, my mom dies. Now, that was the thing that almost crushed me. Because she was the only person that I had close to me. And that year was the year that God brought me the scholarship to go to Nigeria to study. Long story cut short is the reason why you are seated here today. So I go to Nigeria and Bible school is running from 8 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon. So the first semester goes down and I'm like all this time I have because this, the things these guys are teaching you don't need to revise if you know God if, I mean I'm coming from a place where I have been teaching so my, my mind there is a way so I asked the person that, that, that was sponsoring me I said is, there, is it possible for me to enroll for another course in the university I said by all means so I took computer engineering. So I was doing theology and computer engineering at the same time. So I graduated with two degrees at the same time. Somebody say restoration. 
Now, the problem with you is that you, the moment you see yourself in the Buddha Buddha, you condemn yourself. This is where I will die. No. See something that is beyond where you're standing now. Let it sponsor your faith in God. And what, whatever God shows you, believe it. Are you with me? You don't need to know the how. Just believe it. Leave the how to God. Because the problem is that many of us, we try to figure out how God is going to do it. With God, you're showing me this. Where I am, and this thing you're showing me, explain to me how you're going to get there. That's not your business. Your business is to believe God. Alright? Just believe what he showed you and take everything else as a joke. Number two, what do I need to do to build with God? Are you getting blessed, somebody? I'll try and see whether we can exhaust this today. If we're not, if we are not able to, then we have a part two next week. Is that okay? Then this means, number two, that you have to have value and respect for God's word. Have what? Value and what? Respect for God's word. Let me explain what that means. Anyone who desires to build with God must therefore labor in the word to get it and you must place a very high regard, a very high value to the word of God. Don't lose it for anything. It looks like the first point and the second point, they are similar, but you will notice the difference. When you hear God, when you see where God is taking you, take it with a lot of seriousness. Do not allow anything around you mess you up to lose that vision. You must sustain the necessary level of spiritual intelligence to know the value of the word of God. Is greater than material possession. When God speaks to me, I value it more than God giving me a car. Or God giving me a, a, a house or money or whatever it is. The word of God to me oh, is my ultimate treasure. I have, I have Bibles literally in every space I am. Uh, you will find it on the dashboard of my car. You will find it in the bedroom. Find it on the sitting room. Find it everywhere. I have over 15 versions of the Bible in my phone. It's my treasure. If God wants to find a way to talk to me, he doesn't have to look too far. He will find it. I have value for it. You need to know that the value of God's utterances, the value of God's one word from the Lord, is more, more valuable than material possession. Are you with me? Regard the word of God. Value it. Value the word of God. Many of us don't have value for the word of God. That's why we give up easily on ourselves. We don't have, when you value his word, you will seek for it. Did you hear what the Bible said? Those who diligently seek him. So when you have value for his word, you will seek it. You will seek it in tapes. You will seek it in YouTube. You will seek it in reading the, the, the hard copy Bible. You will seek the word of God by any means that God speaks to you. God calls people who have no value for spiritual things profane people. He calls them what? The word profane means someone who has no regard for spiritual things. You remember Esau? For what do they call it? The Bible calls it a muscle of bread. He sold his birthright. And birthright to him, it was just nothing. What is a name when I want to die? At sasa ni ambiangu wa mimi ni firstborn. Na ni mekufa nanja. But you know the question is, 
was, Jake, was, was Esau really going to die because of one day's hunger? The, as far as I'm concerned, Mama Yake alikuwa meambia Jacob, you get in here, take a kid, slaughter it. It means that family had possessions. Hakukuwa na jaa nyumbani? It's just that he didn't value. He said, what is birthright to me when I die? The way you ask yourself, what is, you know, somebody, in our generation, it is not weird to hear somebody slept with someone to get a job. It's not weird. No, people don't care. Yesterday night, I saw a very disturbing video. You know, once you're scrolling on Facebook like this, and then you, you just stumble on a, on a video. Especially this, I don't know, whoever brought the idea of reels needs to go back where they came from. So I'm scrolling this, and I see a man walking with a woman, completely naked. She wore a dress, but the slit of the dress is here, and she has nothing. And, and the man is walking by her side, well suited. So that you know women, a demon is following you. How does a man wear shirt, tie, suit on top of it? Now where we make a mapaja wazi? In this July cold, what is wrong with you? Who are you trying to impress? The man you are trying to impress has covered everything he has. Who told you that you need to ex expose yourself? But this is the same generation I'm telling you. It's not weird for somebody to sleep with a CEO, a boss, or someone who has the capacity to give them a job. You have already traded your birthright for a job. A job that tomorrow, if the company closes, will you bring the person you slept with? Don't forget that they sacked you. Sacking you is far because maybe he will protect you. If the company runs bankrupt, what will you do? And you've already lost your virginity to a job of 50,000 Kenya shillings. The highest level of foolishness ever. But you see, somebody will ask, Ikanairo, virginity in Nsaidia nanini? Tasa ni melalanja. What is this thing helping me with? The honest truth is, you are a profane person. And I'm not talking about just, it's not just women. We've seen men do crazy things. Even college today, for an lecturer des decides to be a demon, that somebody cannot pass their exams until they compromise with the lecturer. Either you bribe or you, I mean, I'm waiting for the day I'll meet some of those people. I'm not the kind of person that will pray for peace. A mercy for you. It's judgment. How do you defile people's children? Every girl that passes through your class you've slept with. That thing needs to shrink back. So that you will know that there is a God in heaven who cares about people. At the end of the day, you... You, you the person that is sleeping with people and the one who is getting the job or the, the exam or whatever it is, all of you have no value for spiritual things. So you look at what you have now and, and think that is so important than your destiny and than your eternity. Praise the Lord. Your eternity is more valuable than anything you will ever get on the face of the earth. Jesus made a comparison. I told you that in the beginning. He made a comparison. He says, what shall it profit a man? As in, what is the value of you gaining the whole world at the expense of losing your soul in eternity? The, when he compared, do you know what it means to have the whole world? There's no one single man that has the whole world. But God is saying, even if there was a capacity for you to be the president of the world, Imagine how powerful the president of America is. If you are the president of the whole world, he says, if you have that to yourself and you lose your soul in eternity, there is no profit in that material possession.
Many have sacrificed their birthright. But listen to this. The Esau generation, that's what I call them. The Esau generation are people who get robbed of their future because of despising the invisible. They get robbed of their tomorrow because of what? Despising the invisible. They despise their future and they exchange the spiritual for material. Be careful you don't get there. Be careful you don't end there. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Only what is founded in the word of God can stand the test of time. We must therefore seek to know the mind of God before we can found anything. Before you can begin to want to build anything, seek to know, is God in this thing for me? Before you say, yes, I do to anybody, it doesn't matter the, the quality of flowers they give you. Forget about the diamond in the ring. First of all, is it the mind of God for you? If it is not, just stand up and walk away. You know, I don't want to hurt him. He's been good to me. Those are some of the lies Satan gives people to enter into the wrong marriage. And listen to me, young men and young girls who are investing more than you should invest with in relationships. Be careful. You have no business treating, treating someone like your husband when they are your boyfriend. Unatembea kwa ke Saturday. Unakujanga kama mamafua. Sato. You come, you wash. Cook. Unapika mpaka chakula ya wiki mzima. Unaosha nguo. Unaosha nyumba. And you top it up with sex. Let me tell you what is going to happen to you. One day that man is... He, he has gotten to know everything about you. Ame kujua inside out. There is nothing else to look forward to. Soon you will be damned. If you don't, is the reason why you hear people say, if you leave me, I will kill myself. You invested more than it was necessary. You don't have any business by paying rent for your girlfriend. Buying iPhones. Do you what? What are you doing as a man? Investing that kind of level of investment in somebody who is not your wife. Upon your nasgianga mutu ameacha mtu ametumiwa ame people to poison the person because someone is feeling like they are at a loss they invested a lot on you alafu umewaacha tu hivyo i was reading the story of a lady who was poisoned by her own friends because she left a man and the man couldn't take it sent her friends to poison her somebody was telling me that story in december I was in kisumu in december because you are you are investing more than what is necessary in relationships. Are you an NGO? Why should you be? <laughs> Why should you pay rent? And if you are here, somebody is paying your rent. Stop it. The, those things you see on, on social media, they are, they are not godly. Keeping up with the Kardashians, you know? So you have somebody doing your nails, someone is doing your hair, and somebody else is doing your clothes, and the other person is paying rent. You and Satan have no difference. It's just that you are here and he's in hell. The difference is your location. You and Satan, no difference. I'm, I'm saying these things intentionally because we are in a generation that needs wisdom. You are dating somebody, they don't become your responsibility. The reason, you need to define every stage of your relationship. There is a stage where you can pay somebody's rent, I don't deny. But that person should be the person you've already started paying dowry for. Don't pay rent for somebody who is in college. Come on. Define your, your relationship stages and put boundaries. Else, you will find yourself in places where you are not able to snatch yourself out. 
Somebody is paying your rent, buying your clothes, fixing your hair. When they ask for sex, you have no right to say no. Give it. You have no right to say no. What? In exchange for what will a man do that for you? Be wise as a woman. Don't be stupid. What, what, in exchange for what will a man be investing 150000 to buy you a phone? You're not his mother. You're not his sister. Be wise. And hell is the only place that will be conducive for people like you. Except you repent. Except you repent. Number three. If you are going to build anything with God, you have to respect the principle of small beginnings. This is so important to the young people. You have to do what? Respect the principle of small beginnings. This is the third quality of anyone who is going to build anything with God. There has to be a regard you have for little things. Because remember, everything God will do with you will start from what? A seed level. To grow, to become what he showed you. So one must get to a place where you know that starting small does not mean you will add small. <laughs> starting small does not mean you will do mean you do what? You will end small. Wisdom demands that you do not look down on anything that God is involved in irrespective of how insignificant it may look now. If you're in a business and God is involved in it, if, if you sit there from morning to evening and nobody buys from you, don't look down on that business. As long as God is involved in it. You're doing ministry as a man of God and you come the first Sunday, it's just your wife and your children and your house girl, preach the word. If God is involved, don't look down on that thing. Hallelujah. Three years ago, we sat here first Sunday. Only me and my wife. We didn't have house girl or child. Two of us. And we paid the hall to preach to ourselves. So she sang. I was a congregation when she was singing. <laughs> she took the offering. I gave. She prayed. Sat down. I, I became the pastor. She became the congregation. And for 40 minutes, I was preaching to one person. Don't think God is stupid to look at that level of commitment and ignore it. The problem with you, you want things that work fast, quick fix. When you see people where they are today, you think that's where they began. Ah! And I see a, a mansion it, five bedroom mansion it. You don't know that person, one day they were in a bed sitter. You must respect the principle of what? Small beginnings. The Bible speaks in Job 8 verse 7. It says, even though your beginning may be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. You need to know that there is nothing that begins with God that can end small. Nothing that begins with God that can end small. As long as he is involved in it, just give it time, my friend. You will see what will come out of it. Hallelujah. Respect the principle of small beginnings. Write this scripture. Genesis 8 verse 22. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. There is a time to plant. There is a time to do what? To harvest. Seed time and harvest. Genesis 8 22. So don't be comparing with yourself with people who are in their harvest season. You take your seed and eat it competing with people who are eating their harvest. Why should you take a loan to buy a car and you just got married? You don't even have a job to sustain that 
kind of life. Because all my mates are driving. That's how you will put your neck into death. Start somewhere and grow with God. Are you with me? Start somewhere and do what? Grow with God. If you have to cook with stove today, cook with it with honor. Mimi pasta ata arufiam. I don't, I hate paraffin. Hate it, but cook with it. He didn't tell you to drink it. Use it and cook. When that level, you outgrow it, God will send another one. Praise God. When we started this church, there was no sound. You see the way you are enjoying? There was no sound. There was no camera. Who will even be on the camera when it is me and my wife? She will now be videoing me and writing notes. There was no sound. We clapped hands here for one full year and I was not bothered about sound. They can tell you those who came earlier. I never for one raised money to buy sound. Oh, at Itufanya Arambe. No, no. Sound is not important. When you are speaking to 10 people, what do you need sound for? <laughs> you see, that's your problem. You want to cut your clothes bigger than your size. You are talking to 10 people. What do you need sound for? Talk, my friend. We can hear you. Sasa unaweka watu pressure. Ati we lete 30,000. Na we lete hii. Dio tununue sound. Calm down. In the process of time, we, we have spent money that we didn't know where it came from. Last week, we just got an, that other machine that is just there. For what? Just because God is in the business. Are you with me? Start small and grow with God. Respect the principle of literal beginnings. It does not mean that's where you're going to end. If you bother yourself with greatness, when it is your time to sit, you will find yourself in trouble. I am teaching you wisdom that God has taught me over the years. Mike, Mike was with me in Mombasa. I married in a bed sitter. Hallelujah. And he will tell you, I will welcome everybody in that house. Unajua hiyo mali, self-confused place. You get in and you're everywhere. There's no privacy, nothing. A newly wedded wife, all the way from Lagos. When we entered the house, when, when we, we left the airport, got home, and my wife, when I opened the door, she was looking. I'm sure she was like, where are the other rooms? Because I didn't tell her, it's not my business to discuss where I'm living. It's me you are following, not my house. <laughs> Furthermore, we said, where are you go, I go. <laughs> so, it's me you are following, not my house. And from that place, we have grown step after the other, step after the other. We are not where God is taking us yet, but we are not where we began. Are you understanding now? We are not where God wants us to be or where he is taking us, but we are not where we began. Today, you can, somebody can be lost in my house and, and you are like, where are you? Because we are not where we began. In the bed sitter, you don't need to ask somebody where they are. It's song and Peter. It's not where you are. Muna Peter nanga ivi. So at the end of the day, it is so important for you to know that God honors small beginnings. You will soon find out why. Okay. To build your faith, God will always build from the end. So he shows you the future, then he begins to build you from where you are towards the future. Are you listening? You see a 10 bedroom mansion it. That's the future. Then he begins to build with you from a single room. Let me tell you, the journey of the preparation of a man does not look like his destiny. Did you hear what I said? The journey of what? The preparation of a man does not look like his destiny.
So don't look, you know, it will be foolishness for you to think that Deborah will be that tiny for the rest of her life. Why, why, why are you, you? We cannot now wake up in the morning and tell her, you must eat. You must eat. From morning till evening, we are feeding her because we want to see her tall tomorrow in the morning. It doesn't happen like that. There is a process to life that God alone dictates. It doesn't matter how much you feed her. She can't be taller than God wants her to be. Do you understand? It's her season to, to crawl now. She stands up, starts walking. Now she is talking words that only God can interpret what she is saying. But another time she will begin to speak like I'm speaking. Allow your life to go through the different stages of your life with honor and dignity. Don't rush yourself. I'm telling you, you will miss some of the things you're trying to run away from. You know how easy it is to organize a bed sitter? You don't need three hours. You just, one minute everywhere is clean. God gives you a five bedroom. You will fight with rats, cockroaches. You have to employ somebody to clean because you, let me tell you, some of the things you are trying to run away from, you will soon miss them. If you, are, you have a wife and you are sleeping in a three by six bed, enjoy it now. A day is going to come when your children will line them, themselves up in between the two of you. And, and you, you will be wishing that they are not there. And they don't want to sleep anywhere else. So, and they don't care. You're their father. And this is your bedroom. They must be there. The, some of the things you're trying to run away from now, you will miss them tomorrow. I promise you. You see, the way I enjoy talking to you now because we are in a, in a little space, I can, at least I can see the person at the father's end. Imagine now we are 5,000. There is no relationship with the pastor. How do you want to have relationship with 5,000 people? So the man of God just appears like God. And you release the word and you disappear. So I'm going to miss this moment by all means. So I'm enjoying myself. Where we can finish and greet everybody. If you want to greet 5,000 people, you will faint on the line. Start from where you are and trust God for growth. Amen? God builds like an architect. God does what? He builds like an architect. You know what architectures does? Architectural designs do? The, the, or, 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 what are they called? Architectures or architects. Do you know what architects do? They, they design a house, finish it on paper. Then they begin to build on the ground. It will be foolish for you to look down on the foundation until you see the design on the paper. Wow! This is what this thing is going to become. And sometimes the foundation is even covered. Nobody sees it. They fence around it and cover it. Sometimes they bury a lot of things and cover it with sand. Then you see some stones begins to rise. The only hope the owner of the building has is what they show him on the paper. That what you see here is what we are trying to bring up here. That's how God works. He builds the, 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 the present from the future. He shows you your tomorrow then begins to build from here. Don't look down on where you are. Now, Sianze kujikombea na watu wamefika future yao. Imagine now me praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, you who is the God of Bishop David Oedipo. Do you know how many years he has been in ministry? He was celebrating, was it 47, babe, or 48? 40 something years of ministry. I'm not even 40 myself. So before I was not born, he started ministry. I'm not 40 myself. And I want to, God now to give me the kind of results he has. It's madness. Tell somebody, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. There is a lot of time to accomplish life and destiny. Calm down. I 
I think maybe this is where I will close. Let me give you four reasons why God begins small. There are reasons why God will not allow anything to begin so big. There are reasons. Let me give you four reasons why God begins small with people. Hallelujah. Number one. God begins small so that the enemy can be overconfident of himself. When Satan looks at you, he, he, he will think nothing will, will come out of you. Part of the reasons why people were not able to, to confront Jesus' ministry. Did you hear what Philip asked? Can anything good come from Nazareth? That's a place of being despised. God wants Satan to despise you because of the stages of your life. He begins there so that the devil can be overconfident of himself. Imagine a preacher who is a stammerer. Will Satan even pay attention to him? Then, somewhere along the way, pa, the anointing comes on you. All this while, you've been studying the scriptures, baking yourself in the spirit, but Satan is not threatened because you're a stammerer. Or you don't know how to speak English. You dropped in standard 8. Satan doesn't. You can't become anything. He gives up on you. And here you are. God is building you gradually. When what you will become eventually appears. Satan himself is like, wait a minute. Was this what God... The Bible says, if Satan had known, they would not have crucified Jesus. If he had known that the death of Jesus was going to become the salvation of the world, Satan would have given Jesus eternal life. <laughs> I'm telling you, he would have kept him alive till eternity. Hallelujah. But God has taken, chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He begins small so that Satan can be overconfident. You know, your marriage looks like it's, it's nothing. Mume pikana, baka unasikia ni kama, I need to breathe. Keep on breathing inside. <laughs> One day, there's something God is doing with that marriage that Satan can't see. When it begins to manifest, Ah, if we had known this what was what you were, they were going to become when they were fighting, we would have made them to kill each other. But God begins there so that Satan can be overconfident of himself. So you need to see that you beginning small is divine wisdom for your security. Did you hear what I said? You beginning small is what? Divine wisdom for your security. If you took a man to your village, now say and then you appeared in a prado, the witches in the village will make sure he dies before your wedding. So God gives you a poor man. Hi, you, you don't want to listen to me. He gives you a guy who is still tamaking, looking for money, but God has put in this guy some that oh, the world is yet to see but he's covering it in smallness so you take the guy home and the, the examine ah, watch I end there, they don't bother your wedding then bam God comes first car, second one first business, the second business the then they're like wait what are these people becoming because God hid it in small beginnings Know that it is wisdom for God to allow you to begin small. It's for your divine security. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we talk like this, people want, want to feel like pastors are saying we should just continue suffering and not complain. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that don't be over ambitious. Don't bite more than your level. You have no business buying an iPhone right now. If I see it in your hands, I'll take it. Except it's a gift. And I don't know who is that mad person that will give you an iPhone right now 
when you're looking for school fees. I told my wife, if anybody, God knows, if he gives me a, a prado now, I'll sell it. Imagine parking a prado in a rented house. What madness? I'll sell it and buy land and build my house. But you see, for you, ah, unataka too. We are treading. In that, it is, it, is, it is foolishness to appear bigger than yourself. Let me say it. It is foolishness for you to make yourself appear bigger than you are. Instead, you are attracting demons that your life does not really have the capacity to handle. So, when you start dating and your husband doesn't have a don't hire a car to go home. You may attract fights that you don't know where they are coming from. Go on matatu. That's God's safety for your life. Am I teaching you something? This is wisdom. And I'm telling you this because I've seen people who died a death that they, were, they had no business dying. When you appear bigger than yourself, you attract demons that are bigger than you, than you can handle. Go through your life with confidence, with honor, with dignity, with pride. Even if you have, my sister, even if you have five million right now, what business do you have renting a three-bedroom house as a single lady? What are you going to be doing there? So, viatu ziko kwa rumoja. Hiyo rumingine ni ya chihuahua. Ati ati hiyo rumingine. Save that money and help your destiny. So, there are, there are blessings God is going to send to you now. You need the wisdom to, to know what to do with your days of favor. When when Joseph came into the scene, he told the king, we are going to have a bumper harvest for seven years. It's not time for us to eat and just let our stomachs grow. No, it's time for us to save because after these seven bumper harvest years, dryness is coming for another seven years. So what we harvest in our bumper season, we divide it into two. We eat half, we save half. You're a single lady, your father is sending you money, 10,000 for rent. Go look for a house of 3,000. 7,000 every month. In one year, do you know how much money you will have saved? By the time you're stepping out of campus, you don't need anybody to borrow you capital to start a business. I was being sent up, keep money when I was in college. I bought books worth thousands. There are books. I bought one piece of book like this. is 5k. One like this. And when I was leaving Nigeria, my wife is here. She's a, she's a witness. She can tell you. I, when I was leaving Nigeria, I got excess luggage. I took out clothes and dump, gave people. Take clothes. They have no value to me. I, I have tailors in Kenya who can give me more clothes. I carried books. Today when I talk, you think, ah, oh, pastor. No, no, calm down. Just go back to history and know where we have come from with God. I carried three boxes of books. That was my investment for my college life. For you, you may need to start a business after college. What are you doing now with your, with your time, with money? They are sending you money here. There is help loan here. But this is the time now you are buying Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Where? My friend. Ukitembea kwa street auguzui. Then you come out of college and you trek for seven years looking for a job. You are not wise. Please lay your hand on your head and say I receive wisdom. Say it with conviction. I receive wisdom. In Jesus name. Number two, why does God begin small? God begins small to 
test your commitment to your vision and to him. To test what? Your commitment. Imagine church. Let me use myself now as an example. An apostle like me. Called by God. And then we start church and for the first Sunday. And not just that first Sunday. Many other Sundays. My wife and I. God, what are you doing? Meanwhile, before we left Mombasa, you needed to hear the words that God was speaking. I have sent an angel before you to amplify your... You, you would think by the time you land in Dika, people will start gathering at the parking lot or at the stage. I have sent an angel before you. He will amplify your voice. In one of, one of those visions, my wife saw an angel standing somewhere in a wall with an armor, creating a, a, a door on that wall. And God says, I will make way where there is no way. That's God telling you about how it is going to happen in Dika. Then I enter visions and begin to see multitudes of people. One day, I was in a vision. I was somewhere praying in a bush. And I saw a vision. We were in a crusade. She was the one ministering. And I saw thousands of people. Come on, see healings. And then we come in the on ground. Where? Between the different, my friend. So to go up as if you are willing, and that is where God is showing us. Why is God doing that? He is doing that to test your commitment to Him. If you can't stick with what is small, you are not to be trusted with it when it is big. You want a man that is self-made. Who made him? Who made him? Because there is no one who makes himself. So, if you want to take part of greatness, be part of building greatness. So, God will give you a man. Munaanza life. There is a lot of wisdom in it. A lot of wisdom. And I'm not saying if God's will for you is to marry somebody who is established, who said me at the pastor, he said me to see him to a pesa. That is now going to be you misunderstanding my sermon. I'm saying, don't push yourself and reject God's will because it doesn't look like what you want. Imagine if I went home and I told God, God, this is not what you showed me before I left Mombasa. So, the day you get prepared to bring people, you let me know. And then I close the church. Where will you be today? Where will this person be today? Where will that child that, that, that child that we are going to receive next month, where will that child be? That, that would have been a case of somebody buried already, or maybe, maybe. Because a man did not answer the call and stay committed to what looked small, but has a great future. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? God wants to test your commitment Will you stick to it even when everyone else thinks it's foolishness? Everybody thinks you are mad. Pastor, you are at the Fungua church. How many people did you have? Oh, we, we were blessed. God, the, the presence of God moved. How many people were in the service? Me and my wife. I know there is faith, but this doesn't look like it's faith. If you listen to those kind of advice, you will miss out on God. Even when everybody else thinks you are failing, can you stay with it? I have a pastor friend of mine who came and told me how he wanted to divorce his wife. They had just gotten married. Me, I was even not married. I remember I was counseling him from uh, Pastor Bill's house just behind here. And he told me how he is tired, the wife is tired, so he thinks they actually need to separate. I said, okay, if she needs to go, let her go, but don't. This is, this is not what God wants you to do. You are teething. Have you, imagine your tongue. How many times have you beaten yourself last week? The tongue and the teeth. The tongue now will now say, please, I don't want to stay in this mouth any longer. 
because meno sijui shinda yenu nini mnakaa tu mkitembea mimi niko mahali pamoja na meno inayo inasema hapana mimi ndio niko mahali pamoja wewe ndio unakaa ukimove umekuja kwetu kufanya unaumwa kwa sababu ume extend boundaries i mean but these two organs stay together in peace because they have a purpose to achieve there is no chewing without the tongue and the teeth together if you have teeth and no tongue you can't chew if you have tongue and no teeth you will chew you can't swallow or swallow you can't chew allow yourself to grow with the process and god wants to test your commitment to what he is doing with you because you know everybody believes what is working right what about if it's not working do you believe god do you believe god listen to this small with god does not mean failure it's a test of commitment small with god does not mean failure is a test of what commitment if you can't stick to it when it is small you are not to be trusted with it in its fullness that means you are in it for what is in it for you are you with me now in amanisha you are only believing god for what he can give you out of the vision not because you are given to him but by the time umekuja church na wewe ni wewe pastor mke wako ndiye member na wewe ndiye mtoaji wa sadaka hall ni wewe unalipa so unaenda nyumbani you are asking yourself are you doing ministry or ministry is doing you the issue is you are in it as an obedience to god not for what is going to come out of it and that has been meant by my mentality since day one and look what god has done and it it has not yet appeared what we shall be just keep watching if god gives you the grace stay with us one day you will wake up and say wow pastor told us we didn't believe him for those of you who are walking by sight there's a story in matthew 25 we don't i don't think we have time to read it about a man who was to travel and give his servants talents and he gave to one how many five and to another one two and to another one and in verse 14 verse 15 the bible says he gave each one of them according to their abilities several abilities so he said now let me tell you ability is not equal to potential ability is not equal to potential listen to me the reason i say so ability can be developed potential is inherent when we say somebody has potentials it means it was given to them before they were born right are you with me abilities can be developed with time and experience so when the bible says god gave to each one of them according to their several abilities it means what they had gathered and learned according to their time and and the results will show you that god was right the one he gave five brought ten the one he gave two brought four about the one he gave one he went and buried it that was his level of growth and maturity that's his ability he might he might have potential but ability is lacking. So sometimes God is not giving you something, not because you don't have the potential to become it, but you are yet to develop the ability that pulls out your potential. Are you listening to me? So you need to learn that many times it's not about what you are capable, capable of it's what you are able of capacity and ability are two different things 
Okay? So capacity is the same as potential. Ability. What are you able to do now? Some of us, God knows. If we have one million right now, right now, God knows himself, Satan, and your father and your mother, they all be looking for you. So for your safety, he keeps your provision at the level of where you can, your ability can. That does not mean that's all you can become in life. Your potential may be you will be a billionaire. But right now, your ability is that you can only manage 100,000. You've heard me say it here. Give someone who has grown something small. They will work that thing to grow to their level. Give someone who has not grown something big, they will reduce it to their level. Give a pastor who has not grown and, and has not developed himself a church of 5,000 people, it will just take time. They will reduce to 10. Give another pastor 10 people who has grown himself and has capacity. Give him time. They will grow to 5,000. You know, I asked somebody, I said, let's talk about our Kenyan people. What do you think will happen if Archbishop Harrison Nganga decides to leave CFF Nairobi and go to Matu to start a church? He goes to Matu. If Matu is even close. Just goes down, down in those places and buys land and builds a church there. You know the first Sunday he will have more than 3,000 people attending the service. People will drive from Nairobi and go attend the service there. The problem is not the location, it's the man. If he gives you the one in Nairobi, it will be empty. <laughs> People will leave you there and go and meet him in that bush. Why? Somebody say ability. You might have the potential to become like him, but right now this is your level. So God wants you to grow with a vision. God wants to grow, you to grow. Listen to me, husbands and wives that are quarreling every now and then because you're living in a bed you're, you're not wise. God kept you there so that you can bond. <laughs> By the time your wife leaves the bathroom with a the, with the towel, there's nowhere to go. Again, the kitchen at the It's just time to bond. I mean, it's time to bond. Because your mentality, you're biting more than yourself. It's not a problem, it's a blessing. kept you there to bond. There is no seat to sit. Let us sit on your laps. You are bonding. Now you think I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not cracking comedy. I'm just telling you that some of the things that we look at as a problem is not actually a problem. First of all, you don't even have friends to host. You have no children. So what do you need a, a four bedroom house for? To keep what? Ata una pesa ya kununua vitu za kuweka huko. In that bed sitter, you don't have a TV, a una kitty, you only have a bed. So that's the safest place for you. Enjoy it. Ata usianze kutafuta vitu ati za kugawanisha sijui. Ask my wife, there was no 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 what what do they call them? Unaona mtu ameweka sijui pegs ime na na umehang what are they called please talk to me now curtains I told her no let's let's have our space you just come in arrange your bed sit on it just enjoy your life one day you will miss that life my brother I'm telling you now, you don't believe me, but I know you will miss it. By the time you give birth to three boys, and they are all terrorizing you in the house, 
you don't know where the TV remote is, so you will need a big, <laughs> you will need a big house to hide some things. You, yesterday, they brought up alipita tuna mlango ya 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 dispenser, and she has no apology. The other day, I was looking for one of my shoes. I looked for it, looked for it. If you're in a bed sitter, will you look for it like that? Because she carried it where I don't know. That life that you're running away from, one day you will sit down somewhere and say, God, I wish I enjoyed my life. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Number three. Why does God begin small? He begins small to safeguard his glory. To do what? To safeguard his glory. The glory of God is at risk with anything that begins big. Imagine you starting a church. First Sunday. 5,000 people. Where is, where is the glory of God in that? You, you will beat your chest and say, ah, look at the anointed man of God. He begins more to safeguard your what? Your ability not to take his glory. By the time you may answer bed sitter, and then you may panda umengia one bedroom, I love you may panda umengia three bedroom. When you get into a mansion, it, it will not be I worked at no, it will be look at what the Lord has done. You get my point? It will not be you saying, I, I, you know, no, it will be look at what the Lord has done. If you will have a story to tell. Imagine what I'm telling you now, the way it is encouraging you. Some of you is not encouraging you because you don't know where I live. Some of you who know where I live. The story of living in a bed sitter is an encouragement to you, right? Na kwanza kwa hiyo bed sitter I was owing 38,000. Imagine sasa ukiwa ume owe bed sitter alikaribu elifu wa msini. Aujalipa miezi kama kumi. God has had mercy on me. Yani naonanga tu pesa ni metuma kwa rent sa hii na shindwa gai. We. Yo ni renzi ya miezi nne. Kobetsita. Four months cleared in one month. But you see, there has been growth in it. Why? God wants to safeguard his glory so that you will not beat your chest and say, this is me doing it. No. He will humble you from that small beginning. You will know that it was God who lifted you. Did you hear what Nebuchadnezzar said? This Babylon have I built by myself. God said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, let's go to the bush. You need to learn some lessons. And he ate grass like an animal. For how many years? Seven years. For taking God's glory that he has built the city by himself. That could be your marriage. So, ah, I married the best wife in town. My God. Then God comes for you. So the beginning of your marriage is troublesome because God wants you to look back and say, if God didn't help me, I was going to break the neck of this one. <laughs> and you say, oh, this far we have come, it is the Lord that is Ebenezer. <laughs> because we will have killed each other. Come and see Mungu, wewe. Kisirani tu yani. But hiyo kisirani yote, mungu tu anakaweka na yon paka, inafika wakati wa testimony. Hallelujah. So small beginnings are God's wisdom to safeguard his glory uh, or to safeguard our hearts from taking his glory. So when you stay with the vision, you write your story with dignity and honor. Praise the Lord. Finally, and then we go home. We come back by 5 p.m. And you don't know your flyer we may andika 5 30. I don't know who did that. 5 p.m. We come back for 
the interdenominational service. Are you blessed somebody? Number four and the last one. God uses the small beginnings to grow us. And I think I've mentioned a few things on this. I'm just going to fly over it and then we'll be gone. You must identify potential and stay with it. Identify potential and stay with it. So God builds us through the experience of the process. God made the first mistake of producing a full grown man Adam and we all know what he did so he decided from that day on that people including Jesus will grow from child to adulthood because in that the Bible says and Jesus grew in what wisdom and in what in stature so you need to grow capacity and stature. There, are, there is wisdom that you need for managing business because you started small. Hello? There is wisdom you need to manage what? Business because you started small. That's why you notice most of the companies that fathers left for their sons, all of them closed down except for the ones... You know, this is the wisdom the, the Asians have that we don't have. Most of them, their children, immediately they leave school. They don't take them to the house. They drop them at the shop. Have you seen them like that? Unaenda kwa shop kununua a nut. Unasikia, mzea meka kwa kiti. Hey, flani, and there you're not. They are training them business. We Christians, ah. Junior kikuja, mpatie uji, ugali, by the time the guy is done, hata usingizi yako naya, hata jua ulifika nyumbani sangapi. And I think that's what the government of Kenya was trying to correct with this CBC thing, but they also got it wrong in some place. That's why I like the Nigerian system of education. Nigeria, students go to school from morning to one. There's no school in the afternoon. So, sanane unawaona? They have been in school before. They are now helping their mothers in business. That's why these guys are aggressive the way they are aggressive. And they are making it in life anywhere they go. They didn't just receive education, they received life skills. So what God wants to do with you in your journey of growing is to teach you life skills. So he won't allow you to start a business so big the problem and the mistake many of you make is to wait to gather money to start big. My wife started her business with one machine and it was borrowed. When we were leaving Mombasa, we had to return it. Now she has five. One. Na ilikuwa ni yakuwa? Tasa wewe unangoja you think you are so spiritual because you have, you have written it down father you know we need 75k in the name of Jesus no, no no begin from where you are if it is one watermelon you can buy of 150 in a bucket you are 20 bob go buy it start from there you will have a story to tell and not just a story to tell you have, you will have gathered wisdom in the process of your growth. Are you listening to me, someone? You develop strength, you develop skills in the process of growth. In every phase and every stage, there are lessons to learn. Learn them. Don't, don't be in a hurry. When God is building with you, Patience is a virtue. We'll talk about patience next week. Hallelujah. So, each stage has lessons for you to learn. Develop skill. Develop stature. Develop strength for the, what you need for your greatness tomorrow. God uses the circumstances in the process of our growth to bring us to the level of maturity and the responsibility that our next level demands. 
So, if you are raising daughters here, don't be shy to condemn your daughters to washing utensils and to cooking. You are the woman you are today because of that suffering. You train girls who can't wash clothes, who can't cook. Ata mayai ya kipika inakaa ni kama ni chapati. And that's, you're preparing a future wife for somebody's son. No. Send them to the kitchen. As early as the age of 10, let them learn how to prepare tea, cook breakfast, do things. You're not punishing them. You're training them for their future. They will thank God that you were their mother. Praise the Lord. He upendo mingi mtoto wakuna kazi anafanya, haezi guza. And I know there are people who will argue with it. Alright, go ahead. Argue with it. You are entitled to your own opinion. But at the end of the day, we've seen people. If, you, if that person lands in the wrong hands, mtoto wamekua akona miaka kumi, standard five, six, seven, they can't wash their uniform. You are not a good mother. That's not love. You are destroying that child. Let them come back from school. Wash their own clothes. Come and see Safi. You come back in the evening and rewash it. Help them. That's how you train children. God is using your own little beginnings to train you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I've said God uses the circumstances in the process of our growth to mature and to grow us into the levels of responsibility that our next level of destiny demands for. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray. Have you been blessed? You see, this is why I keep on insisting don't come to church and not carry a notebook. Imagine your head is not a computer. You by the time it is next week on Sunday, you will have forgotten 85% of everything I've said. One of my greatest mentors told me, writing makes an exact man more exact. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 up your hands and thank God for the words that you have received. Thank you. Thank, you, Jesus. thank, you, Lord Jesus. thank God for the wisdom that you have received this afternoon. Thank, thank you for the entrance. Thank him for the words, the impartation of grace and wisdom. Blessed be your holy name. That from today you will build in wisdom and understanding. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to receive wisdom from you, understanding from you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Amen. Listen to this. I want you to just ask God for one thing. Father, give me the wisdom to build with you. There are things that you have listened to, the things that you have learned. There are places God was correcting you while the teaching was going on. Pray one minute. Give me the wisdom to apply what I have learned. The grace to build with you in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and pray. The wisdom to build with you. The grace to apply the things I have learned here today. 
in my life. Everywhere I need change. Everywhere I need change. Everywhere I need change. In the name of Jesus, help me. Makato shalabaraha. Brande keto shabrande keto shalata. Iman takababo shalande ke presusa falata. Shabranda kato shelebahatanya. Thank you, Lord. 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 We are grateful for your wisdom. Help us, Lord, to apply the words we have received in our journey of growth in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you for the words that we have received this afternoon. We know in the communication of your word, there is impartation of grace. And so we receive with thanksgiving the grace to work what we have received so that our lives can find expression and our destinies can manifest in the way that you have ordained for us. I pray for each and everyone listening to me right now and I ask that Lord you will grant them the grace grant us the wisdom to walk in practice of what we have received today so that we can become what you have desired for us to become. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The reason why I don't want us to spend a lot of time in prayer is because I know in the afternoon we're going to pray. I'm going to be teaching on the power of praying in the Spirit. The wisdom of praying in the Spirit. It's going to be a moment of prayer and I know the presence of God is going to be mighty in this place. If you need a miracle, please don't miss the afternoon service. If you need healing, you need breakthrough, you need whatever it is you need, I'll show you an, a, an easier way to access results in prayer this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we please sit down in a moment as we prepare our offerings? Hallelujah. Let's give to the Lord. Uh, can I have my tithe card, please? Those of you who are paying your tithes, uh, give me my card and, and my... Uh, my card and my a pen, a pen, please. Shalaba kosha talande brigado shiata. Please get an offering for those of you who are watching online. I don't know we are still live. Those who are watching online, thank you so much for tuning in and being part of this service. Uh, we bless the Lord for you, our people. We know that you have been imparted with wisdom and grace. Please, there are details on your screen that you can use to give. Use them and be a part of the giving in this house partner with us and what God is doing in this place and the Lord do you good. Please be an ambassador, an evangelist, share the broadcast with your family and friends and let someone receive the wisdom that you have received.